Welcome back to another TechCore Duo video, and for today I've got a quick tutorial on how to set up a managed user account with parental controls. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is go into System Preferences. Uh, I already had it open, but you can find it on the bottom left here uh, on your dock, or somewhere in the middle here depending on where your dock is. Okay, and uh, if you can't find it on there, you can always click on the Apple logo. And then from the Apple logo, you can click on System Preferences. All right, once you have that up, uh, you're going to go down to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the fifth row down, and you will see Users and Groups. All right, let's click on that. Click on the little lock to make changes, and type in your administrator password. This is usually the same password that you use to log into your account. All right, and then we're going to click on the little uh, plus here to add a user. All right, and it's going to be a managed with parental controls account. Okay, and then you can set an age here, um, whether it's the child is nine, 10, 12. Uh, we're gonna say 12 years old. And we're gonna say the child's name is Bobby. Okay, and then you can leave the same thing here for uh, the account name. And then you can set a password for Bobby. Make ours something simple. Okay, this is a password that you can share with the child. Okay, now it's saying system preferences is trying to modify directory service. We'll say okay. You may or may not get this message uh, depending on whether or not you have some pre-existing settings. Excellent. And now you can click on Bobby's account and then open parental controls. Once again, this is your password. All right, now let's just go through some of the options that we have here. The first tab, simply, do we want to allow the use of the camera? So this is used for things like FaceTime, uh, but then again, it's also used for something like Skype, um, Facebook, uh, you know, different kind of video chat services. We're going to say Bobby does not need that. Okay. Do we want him to join games for multiplayer in the game center? Yeah, we're not going to keep games away from Bobby. Let's let him, you know, enjoy some of the gaming and that kind of thing. Of course, we're going to be monitoring, monitoring, and you know, kind of keeping an eye on what he is doing during that time. Okay, now this is going to uh, kind of give us an option to limit applications on this Mac. We are definitely going to limit applications. Okay, uh, let's say that we have things on here that we don't want Bob to use. So, for instance, a DVD player uh, or something like photo booth. We don't want him taking any pictures in the photo booth. Um, let's keep going down the list. For instance, uh, we don't need him that accessing the Rewinders app. We don't need him accessing system preferences or system information or any of the uh, kind of advanced, you know, specific user um, kind of changes that can be made through advanced apps like system preferences. We'll leave iTunes in there, we'll leave Maps in there. We don't want him the messaging. So we're gonna get rid of that as well. Okay, and let's see, uh, let's go to the web section here. Uh, we're going to, are we going to allow unrestricted access to websites or are we gonna try to limit access to adult websites? So this is a default that Apple has set up and they've done a pretty good job at it. Uh, you can always customize this and add and remove keywords, but if you just leave it on the default setting here, it's pretty great at uh, kind of seeing uh, and maintaining what it sees as appropriate and inappropriate. But if you do see that, you know, um, let's say your child is accessing sites that you don't want him to, you can always go into customize and add a site that you want to be for, uh, not allowed under this customize option here. Never allow these sites. Then always allow these sites because there might be some sites that are 
drawing red flags that you don't really want to kind of draw red flags. All right, we'll cancel on that. And uh, if you also look at those logs down here, you'll be able to see the logs for this account and kind of browse over what has been going on, what sites have been visited, and that kind of thing. All right, then we also have the store here. So if you can restrict the kind of movies, TV shows, the apps, the books with explicit content, uh, leaving all these checked out as is, has uh, kind of done a great job. So I haven't found the need to uh, maneuver any, uh, you know, go through any of these or change any of these options to anything different. All right, and now let's go into time. Okay, this is a great option where you can adjust the days and times and hours of the day where you want your child to not be able to have internet access. So if it's bedtime, even if you try to turn the computer on and go on the web, you will not be able to because there has been a time limit set up and all of these options can be done right through this window here. Okay, and then privacy. So you can disable things like Twitter, uh, calendars, contacts, and reminders. And, and if you don't want to allow those changes, you can just untick all of these here. And then this way, those apps won't be accessible. And under other, do we want to turn off Siri? No, I think Siri is OK. We can leave it on. Uh, one thing on here, you, know, you also have to disable the printing. You don't really want to mess with any of these unless, you know, you're having problems where things are being printed, you know, for no reason, ink and paper are being wasted, and you can do that kind of thing. You can block burning CDs and DVDs. You can restrict explicit language in the dictionary, prevent the doc from being modified so that, you know, if you've added icons to the doc or, you know, set the doc up a specific way, you don't want icons to be moved and removed. But uh, I'm not going to put that on there. Then there's also this... Um, extremely kind of, uh, you know, limiting option, which is use simple finder, where it takes away everything from, uh, takes everything away from the user and kind of gives it just a cut and dry three icons on the dock and you're limited to using those. So, you know, that's just something you can try out. I don't recommend it though, just because it kind of really takes away from the experience of using a Mac. All right. Now let's go into the, uh, into Bobby's account and actually take a look at what it's going to look like from his side. Okay, we'll type in Bobby's password. And uh, this is actually a great example because I'm creating this video so late. It says, hey, the computer time has expired. You're not allowed to go on anymore. You're going to have to get your mom and dad in here to give you an additional 15, 20 minutes or, you know, uh, of browse time. So then in that case, you come in the room, you type in admin or your username, and then your administrator password, and that would grant your child access for another 15 minutes or whatever amount of time that you grant them to use. All right, let's give that a few seconds to log in. Time remaining, that's great. All righty. Okay, this is going to be like a basic setup for the Apple ID and such. We're going to skip this and not sign into any of that. If your child doesn't have an Apple ID, you can set them up with one and sign in and have them, you know, watch their downloaded content, their movies and TV shows and iBooks and such. Okay, uh, this is asking once again for a parental password. We'll do that. Okay. Uh, your computer time is almost up, so this is kind of just like a warning for Bobby to let him know, hey, you have 15 minutes, well, uh, let's get what we need done and go to bed. Okay. Safari can't be opened. Uh, so this is because we blocked the Safari application. If, it, you know, if I always want to allow this, I can say always allow. And it's going to ask for a parent's password, so let's do admin. Apple. Okay, there we go. So that's just a really great example of what 
It's uh, what it's like in a, uh, you know, a restricted account. If you're not allowed to access something, it's always going to ask for a parent's permission before you can do anything. Um, so, for example, system preferences. Um, definitely not allowed to access that. It says the application system preferences can't be opened because, of course, we restricted it. And I'm not going to allow him access to this, so I'm just going to say, okay. If he, you know, says, hey, dad or mom, I want to do this, you say, nope, you're not allowed to get in there. Uh, you can do other things, but not that. Okay, uh, so that's just to kind of give you a feel of what it's like. Uh, if you were to access, let's say, uh, a website that's, on, you know, a bad website. Um, I'm going to go up to something very generic here, but so you can see the result. Oops, you can't see this website. So once again, you know, a website like this would be restricted. And now let's say playboy.com is something you would want the kid to go to, um, which obviously not, but let's say that this message comes up on a site that you actually want someone to visit. You can say add website, and then it'll once again ask for the parent for the username and password to grant this website uh, you know, access on this account. So a really powerful tool for parents uh, and guardians just to kind of help you know kids make good decisions of where they're going and what they're browsing online. Uh, there are other uh, advanced parental control tools like uh, Intego's Content Barrier. They're paid. Um, I just feel like the bang for the buck just isn't there, where you know the built-in tools are just as good, uh, if not better in some cases, than Intego's and kind of third-party software. But, you know, to, to, to each parent, you know, they have the option um, to, to take that extra step and, you know, buy that paid software, which I feel just isn't necessary. But in any case, I hope you guys found that useful. If you have any questions about parental controls or, or would like to learn more, please let us know and we'd be more than happy to put that content out there for you. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.